Hello everybody and welcome to Tropeza TV, the broadcasting from Nairobi, Kenya. And we just want to bring you God's word fresh from heaven. Um, as uh, my husband always teaches, we bring you the word um, of God and we break it down in topics so that you're able to understand it and um, make it part of your life. As usual, on Wednesdays, we teach on, ma on family, on marriage and on relationships. I want to bring you a word that will enable you to have a family that's happy, to have a marriage that works, that's successful. And I thank God that we can teach you about this word because we've had the privilege of putting God's work into practice and bearing the fruits of a happy marriage. So we'll bring you that teaching, showing you what you can do to make your own marriage happy. Now, today we have a beautiful topic for you. We're teaching about what men look for in a woman you know um everything works by codes now you do not decide what people are looking for in marriage many times people are frustrated because they try to do life based on what they think and there's nothing more frustrating than that because that is not a standard you need to have a standard by which you live the standard by which you live will enable you to have fruit fruit in and reproduct and productivity for example if you go to school and you're learning science or maths, there are rules and there are formulas to enable you to do certain questions. They call them problems. And once you follow the given formula, you're able to come up with an answer that is correct according to the standard of math, according to the study of science. You know, when we do experiments, we want to make, do an experiment whose results can be replicated. And that is what we call a standard. If you want your life to be orderly, then you need to follow a standard. And God designed for us human beings to follow the standard of his word. When you do, you will experience, um, you will experience productivity. You'll experience joy. You'll experience peace. Relationships don't work according to what you think. They don't work according to your culture. They don't work according to... Um, your upbringing you could have been brought up in a marriage watching and being um and the family that was molded to you was wrong you know you could have grown up without a parent you could have grown up in a family that was difficult what do you need to do to make your life orderly you're not bound to what you grew up in women you're not a bound to the abuse that you grew up seeing, whether it was your parents fighting constantly, whether it was the lack of a parent, whether you were brought up by a grandparent, whether you spent most of your early life in, in institutions like schools, you can define your life now by hearing God's word and by letting the faith in God's word mold your life. Now, I want to show you according to scripture, what are men looking for? And when we give you this standard, then you'll be able to be prepared and, and um, put across. you find many ladies spend um, many hours in prayer. I've been to different even prophetic churches where you see women giving an offering or a gift for marriage. Now, whereas those are good things, that is not the only standard. The main standard for what God says is, is the word of God. And I want to bring you a scripture, Deuteronomy 21, verse 11. The Holy Spirit inspired Moses to teach the Israelites about how to get a spouse. A man who saw a beautiful woman and was physically attracted to her was permitted to marry her. Now, Deuteronomy 21, 11 says, Have you seen a beautiful um, among the have you seen among the captives a beautiful woman? And had a desire unto her that you would have her for a wife. Did you hear that? The Holy Spirit says that, have you seen a beautiful woman among the captives and have desired to have her for a wife? God designed men to be people who are um, visual. They will appreciate beauty. And when they see a beautiful woman, then they want to spend their life with her. Now, there is no person who has created ugly. You just have to work with what God gave you. Make it beautiful. Some people say, oh no, I want to, to be as natural as possible. And I'll ask you, is that why you, you um, is, is that what you do with your mind? Make it stay natural? No, you go to school. You educate your mind. You're constantly doing research so that your mind matures, your mind grows. In the same way, if you have a garden, you do not leave it and say that that's God's garden. You till it so that it can produce 
fruit. Um, in the same way, woman, work on your beauty. You know, don't neglect yourself. Present yourself as beautiful. Present yourself as lovely, as admirable, both in um, in in shape and and in in what people see. Dress yourself according to your body type. The, make yourself the very best of you. And I'm telling you, that very best of you will be very attractive to a man. And remember, here we're talking about what are men looking for in a woman. What determines what men will look for to get a married spouse? So the first thing, men marry a woman they find physically attractive. In the scripture above we've seen that if you see, it begins by the word if you see. So meaning that the act of choosing is physical and based on sight. Men choose women by how they look, then character comes later. So first is how they look. You know, sometimes you hear men saying, I just saw her worship. I saw the way she dressed. I, I love the way her face was. I love her hair. I love something about a woman will attract a man to her. And it is what he sees. Then um, what is the word beautiful in the scripture above is toa yafe. These two words mean beautiful to look at and attractively shaped. So a woman needs to be beautiful to look at. And attractively shaped and I thank God that he's given men um, the men so many different likes so I'm telling you woman be the best of you because you're attractive to a certain man and that man when he sees you you'll be the top woman in his world number two men love the company of a beautiful woman your looks can either repel or attract your man to, um, or your husband yeah and it's so scriptural we see our mother of faith a woman called sarah the wife of abraham abraham is described as the father of our faith um sarah had a wow factor in her looks she was beautiful and made herself up so attractively that pharaoh's servants recommended her as a prospective wife to pharaoh it wasn't prayer that made her beautiful she groomed herself well and worked on her femininity. Now, it's very important to remember that you work on your femininity. Don't say, I'm a tomboy. I was raised up a tomboy. Marriage does not work when two masculine people are together. It works when one is feminine and one is masculine. That's how codes for relationships are. So be feminine. Love being feminine. Love the things that make you more woman in terms of looks, in terms of um, dressing. Dress your body in a way that brings out your, the, the best of your femininity. Let's look at uh, Genesis 12, verse 14 and 15. And it came to pass that when Abraham was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very fair. She was not normal. Women do not agree to be normal. Go the extraordinary mile. I'm telling you, there's no ugly woman. You just need to work on what you are. And there's no one standard for beauty. You find what works the best for you. Whether it's your hairdo, whether it's your dressing, whether it's um how you do your makeup, just be the very best of you. You know, even God sees beauty. He, you know, it's not just spiritual. What you portray is so important. Um when it comes to relationships. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. She was the top of the top. She was not even a woman to be given to one of the princes, one of the leaders of um, Egypt. She was for the very top. Woman, work on yourself so your beauty will attract nothing but the very best. And I'm telling you, when you do that, even the people around will, will, will say she's, she stands out. She's a beautiful woman. All women are beautiful, but not all women put in the effort into their physical looks. Some say, well, I want to look the way I was created. I want to be natural. That's foolish. Um, you must build up and nurture that look. The natural look doesn't work even in nature. You find that animals groom, yeah? Now plants flower, 
ice crystallizes, water cascades, and even snakes molt. Snakes wear off that old thing and, and become new. And, you know, you need to be refreshed. Woman, don't neglect yourself so that you start looking old and withered and, you know, very, even masculine or just not beautiful to look at. Work on yourself. Work on your looks. Don't neglect yourself. Um, you know, if you've put on a bit of weight, then work on getting it off. If it looks nice on you, wonderful. For you who wants to put on some more weight, please do so. Be the very best on you. Put in some effort to look your very best. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you, we are kings and, and priests on the earth. God reigns through us. The things that God doesn't do for you, God gives you the strength and the power to do them. He says that he's given us power to create wealth. So it's not God who creates the wealth. He gives us the power so that we can go out and create the wealth in the very same way. God has given you the raw materials. He's given you your body. He's given you what you need. Now put in the effort to look after it. Look at the clouds of heaven and the stars at night. They're not only majestic, but brilliant, brilliantly beautiful. Work on your beautiful woman. Yeah. So we say that men will love an attractive woman. They'll also love the company of a beautiful woman. The third thing is that men love friendliness and a smile. You know, that could, could be what changes your destiny forever. A smile warms the heart. A smile gives comfort even to, the, to, the, to your man. You know, sometimes um, some women have developed... Um, maybe they're leaders, so they've developed a masculine nature. That works when you're at work. In relationships, it's very different. Put on that smile. Let that gentleness warm the heart of the man around you. It doesn't mean you have to be quiet. If you're uh, the kind of woman who's loudspoken, still dress that loud nature with a beautiful smile. And be friendly. You know, don't scare people away. Don't scare men away with your aggressiveness. Don't scare men away with um, harshness, you know, with in terms of, you know, the nature that you need to be a leader at work. That's not what you bring into the relationship. Work at developing your feminine side. If you're a woman, that is what you need to do. And I'm not saying that women cannot be leaders. You can be a leader, but lead at work. Be a woman at home. Fully woman. Yeah. Friends, um, a friend sticks closer than a brother. Friends disclose information to each other. Learn to be friendly to the man that shows interest in you. Be your husband's friend. Don't be a servant within your relationship. So, be your husband's friend. Share in each other's lives. Open up. Disclose who you are. Disclose your desires. Disclose how you feel. Yeah? And let that be, um, your beauty from within be seen in your relationship. John 15, 15 says, Henceforth, I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Do you see how Jesus calls his friends, calls us friends and not servants? Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, has called us friends. Why? Because he tells us, what that which he's doing he has revealed to us everything that the father taught him that is what makes us friends that there's nothing hidden from the uh between us and jesus he, he's made known to unto us servants don't get to know everything but friends do when a man opens to you, opens up to you and begins to tell you about his family his life work and progression he's treating you as a friend disclosure is what makes one a friend Make sure that you behave and act in a friendly manner too. So uh, once a man starts being kind and opening up, telling you the secrets of his heart, telling you about who he is, um, his family, his work, the things he has, the hopes he has, the aspirations he has, he's disclosing who he is. Now you likewise, when a man does that, he's, he's being your friend. You also act in a friendly way. Disclose about yourself to him. And then be friendly. Put on a smile on your face. If you're a woman who's had a, a very serious face, begin to practice to smile. I'm telling you, it's one of the things that I've, um, we've talked about a few minutes ago. Um, you can work on it. If it's not a, a natural to smile, 
work on that smile. It will just bring such comfort, such hope, such joy to the man in your life. Proverbs 18.24 says, A man that has friends must show himself friendly. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. If you want a friend in a man, show yourself to be uh, as a friendly person to him. That's what will make that man stick to you more closely than his own blood brother. You see, um, if you're already married, be friendly. Don't forget as couples to continue being friends. There are many roles that a husband will take in your life. Just like um, we read in the book of Ezekiel, you know, the angel that has four faces. So we sometimes talk about a man having um, different faces in his life. He's, he's a man, he's a lion, he's an eagle, and he's a donkey, uh, um, symbolically. Meaning that as a man, he's your friend. He's that physical person. And when we describe marriage, that's the way marriage begins, in a physical way. Number two, he is... Um, an eagle, he's the leader, he foresees the prophetic nature in a man will enable him to set the direction for his family. Then the third thing is that he's a lion, he's a fighter, he'll defend his territory. He'll allow the lioness or the queen in his life to take up her place as queen as he himself reigned as the king. The fourth thing is that a man will be uh, like a donkey or like a cow, an animal that works. So that's the nature of a man to you. You likewise, woman, uh, act in a friendly way. Open up and disclose what's in your heart. Most women refuse to give information to the men they are, they are attracted to and later wonder why those men are pulling away from them. Playing hard to get is for fools. Act in wisdom instead. And wisdom is found in the word of God. Just as we're sharing with you right now. Act in wisdom. So we're telling you in wisdom, open up your heart. Share what is within you. Talk about your life, your family, your aspirations, your experiences, what you're going through, what you want to go through, you know, what um, you want to do. And one of the things is that that um, relationship is one place where um, the person in your life gets interested in you fulfilling your dreams. You disclose so that they become a part of you achieving that which you set out to be to achieve. And it can only happen when you disclose yourself. In summary, look extremely beautiful and dress in a way that accentuates your shape. Yeah, there's no woman who is ugly and God never created just one shape. I'm telling you, every shape he created is beautiful. So you work at you, be the best of you. Secondly, be friendly and open up. If you do these things, you'll be amazed at how your man will respond to you. The bottom line is wisdom. Be designing so that you don't end up with the wrong man. How would you know if a man is the wrong one? The, out of the, heart, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The character and nature of a person is found in their words. The content of their heart will always come out in their speech. From the speech, you'll tell if they're good or bad for you. This is why we're talking a lot with, um, with the one you're interested in. is extremely helpful. So when you talk with a person, they reveal who they are. So you will be able to tell what they say. And by that, you'll be able to tell whether that's the right person or the wrong person for you. Uh, talk as well to your spouse as speech builds. It's so important to spend a lot of time talking. Because that's how relationships are built up. They're built up by words. They're not built up by just giving gifts. Their gifts are a part of them. But relationships are about the words you speak. So have the wisdom. Later on, we'll I mean, not later on, we have a lot of teachings about um, how a woman should talk to a man, how a man should talk to a woman, what is each person looking for in a relationship. And we will be revising those often so that your relationship works. Um, for example, women want to be loved. Men need to be respected. And if those are mixed up in a relationship, you'll have a hard time. So woman, you need to know how to dispense respect to your husband. Man, you need to know how to love your wife, how to care and show understanding. And all this is done through words. Matthew 12, 34 to 37 says, You're like the children of 
dangerous snake. You cannot say good things when your thoughts are bad. When you speak, your words show what is in your mind. A good man says things because he keeps good thoughts in his mind. A bad man says things because he keeps bad thoughts in his mind. What I say is true. One day God will judge everybody. On that day, you must tell God why you spoke each careless word. God will then say to you, The words that you spoke are good. I will not punish you. Or God may say to you, The words you speak are bad, so I will punish you. So, by the words that you speak, woman, by the words that the man interested in you speaks, you'll be able to know the nature and character of that man. He is the right person for you. So listen and be wise. Now, women who are used to abuse chase away good men because they have the notion that too good uh, that they are too good to be true. Well, from the words of Jesus, evil or bad uh, people speak evil or bad things. Good people speak good things. That's the litmus test for choices in relationships, and for eternal life. Please listen to this message over and over again if you're a woman who's looking to be in a relationship. If you're a married woman, listen to this so that you may know how to best develop your relationship, you know. Be, continue being beautiful. Do not neglect yourself. Don't neglect your looks. Remember, your husband is still very physical and he sees and he likes what he sees. So keep your husband seeing the most beautiful person in the world. And that's not to say that, um, you know, um, I think that's to say that you should um, work on your beauty. Work on looking the very best at all times. Be extraordinary like the mother of our faith, Sarah, was. Or women like Esther, be outstanding. We love you so much. Um, we bring you this word so that your relationships would work. We bring you this word so that you would be renewed in the spirit of your mind to think according to God's word. I bring you love and greetings from my wonderful husband, Apostle Joseph Hallon. Today he's in another ministry, but I bring the word to you as um, to your mom in, this, in the faith. I love you so much. Have a blessed time and just know that we love you. Okay, goodbye.